Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pocket-sized portable RTX A500 GPU from a company known as AD-Link. I believe that's how you're going to pronounce it. This is the Pocket AI. And yeah, I've been really wanting to test this thing out. Basically, what we have is a portable RTX A500 GPU. It's going to connect to your laptop or your mini PC over Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, or USB 4. And as you can see, they call it the Pocket AI because it is absolutely tiny. In fact, it does get a bit smaller than this. It's got a shockproof rubber cover over it right now. And uh, with this off, it is a bit smaller, but we've got two ports. PD power in and Thunderbolt. Again, it will connect to USB 4. So I really do think that this is an awesome little idea. And this wasn't specifically designed for gaming, but of course we will be testing some gaming out here. This was really designed for AI accelerated learning to help out a lower end chip that just doesn't have that GPU power to get the tasks done. And if you head over to their official website, they've got tons of information on this little thing. A bunch of different use case scenarios. They've got some benchmarks they're showing off here. But I wanted to go over these specs because it's really interesting the way this thing works. Now, we don't have video out, which would make a difference if you wanted to use this for gaming. And of course, we will be testing it for gaming. But when it comes to the specs, we've got a base clock of 435 megahertz, a boost up to 1,335. This is basically a cut down mobile variant of that RTX A500. Keeping those clocks down to keep it nice and cool. But we still have 2,048 CUDA cores, 64 tensor cores. 16 RT cores, 4 gigabytes of GDDR6. It only pulls 25 watts from a PD power supply. And I've actually been using a dual port 100 watt power supply so I could charge my laptop up and power this device at the same time. So yeah, this is a really interesting little device. We've only got two ports on it, our PD power in and Thunderbolt. Moving around back, a little bit of ventilation for the built-in cooling system. They definitely needed to keep this GPU nice and chilly. And on the bottom, this is where all of our fresh air is going to be pulled in and then pushed out the other side. In this video, I'm going to be testing it on two different devices. We're going to go with this AMD platform that utilizes USB 4. This has the Ryzen 7 6800U and setup is very simple. First things first, we need to power the Pocket AI. Now there are some laptops out there that have several USB ports that'll do up to 100 watt PD out. You could power it like that, but with the one I have here, I've only got two free USB ports. One is going to be used for charging the internal battery of the laptop. The other is my USB 4. Now that we've got power going to the Pocket AI, we just need to plug in our Thunderbolt or USB 4 cable. Wait a few seconds for everything to initialize. And now when we take a look at Task Manager, you can see we've got that 6800U CPU. We still got access to the integrated Radeon graphics, but instead of using those, we're going to be utilizing this A500. And we will be coming back to this laptop by the end of the video. One of the main things I was interested in was how much more powerful this A500 is versus these integrated AMD graphics. But now I want to move over to another little system. Okay, so the first kind of testing I wanted to do was on a mini PC. And for this, I'm actually using the last NUC that Intel made. This is the Core i7-1360P. I've got 32 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3200 megahertz. And with this, we get those Iris XE graphics. We've got 96 execution units here. And if you ever messed around with integrated graphics, you know this is pretty low end when you compare it to uh, AMD's newer stuff. But instead of using those integrated graphics, we've got the A500 connected over Thunderbolt 4. Now when it comes down to it, this portable GPU isn't going to turn your laptop or mini PC into a 4K monster AAA gaming machine but it can definitely help out with integrated graphics like these XE. I've got a bunch of benchmarks and real world tests that we're going to be taking a look at, but the first thing I wanted to show off was some Blender rendering. Here we have Blender. I was going to go with the uh, BMW benchmark and I'm using the GPU. We're using the Iris XE graphics right now. So I'm going to give this a little time to finish up. So that actually took a lot longer than I thought it was gonna, but the Intel Iris XE graphics finished this in five minutes and five seconds. That's actually a pretty long time to render this image out. The, now I wanted to run that same benchmark with the Pocket AI A500 GPU. And uh, since this is an NVIDIA RTX GPU, we do have access to CUDA with Blender, and it is much faster. 
because it finished the render in 1 minute and 13 seconds. And, you know, going into this, I figured that the A500 would win. With those CUDA cores cranking out in Blender, it can really make a difference. But this can make a huge improvement when running AI models. So uh, over on the website, they do have a couple live demos. They've got the uh, YOLO 4T object recognition. On the Intel i7-1260P, which actually has the same graphics as my little NUC, uh, with this test, they averaged 5.5 FPS, but with the A500, that average jumped up to 67.8. They also showed off some AI enhancement demos, like low light enhancement for videos. On the Intel i5-1235U with Intel Iris Xe graphics, it finished this one up in about 54 seconds, but with the A500 Pocket AI, it took right under 16 seconds. So again, this can really help out with AI accelerated tasks, but I know a lot of you are really interested to see how this thing can game. And the first thing I did was run some benchmarks. And with 3 d Mark Wildlife on the Intel Iris Xe iGPU, 13,320. On the Pocket AI, A500, 16,815. And to tell you the truth, I thought the jump would be a bit more, just taking a look at this one. And I also ran Night Raid. On the iGPU, 17,779. On the A500, 24,508. So with these synthetic benchmarks, it's looking like the A500 is more powerful than these Intel Iris Xe graphics, but these are synthetic, and I wanted to move over to some real-world gaming just to see what would happen here. Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, medium settings on the built-in Iris Xe graphics. I got an average of around 46 FPS by the end of this run, and of course we could take the settings down. We could go to 720, we could go to low, but I wanted to keep it here at medium 1080. So I played through a little bit on the XE graphics, and then I plugged in the A500 and booted the game back up. And now, using the same exact settings, 1080p, medium, I've also got the TDP the same for the CPU, we averaged 73 FPS on the Pocket AI. So that's a pretty big jump in performance. I mean, the game went from unplayable at 60 to playable over 60. This actually felt really smooth. I could go ahead and turn V-Sync on and just play it all day like it is right now. I also tested Shadow of the Tomb Raider, just to use the built-in benchmark. We're at 1080p medium settings, 80% resolution scale with both of these. Obviously, on the left-hand side, we've got the XE. On the right, we've got the A500. At the end of the benchmark, on the integrated graphics, we had an average of 23 FPS. On the A500, 66. So another nice little jump here. And of course, through all of this testing, we've been on Thunderbolt 4 with this Intel NUC. Now I want to move over to an AMD platform with USB 4. And it looks like we are getting a bump in performance over that RDNA 2 iGPU with the uh, Ryzen 7 6800U. Now, I will admit that this is not going to be a big jump when it comes to something like the new 780M iGPU, which is based on RDNA 3. But with Horizon Zero Dawn, on that RDNA 2 Radeon iGPU, we averaged 49 FPS on the A500 61. And this is at 1080p original settings. And the final thing I did here was just run the UniEngine benchmark. On the RDNA2 iGPU, we had 45 FPS. On the A500, 75. Overall, I think the Pocket AI A500 is an awesome concept. It's working great the way it is right now, but one thing I'd love to see on a next edition would be obviously a more powerful GPU, but video out. Even if it's over USB Type-C, it'd be really nice, because if you watch my channel, you know I've done a lot of eGPU testing in the past, what we're doing here is looping the video back into our monitor, and with that, we can definitely lose a lot of performance. I've seen a 25% decrease in performance doing it this way with an external GPU. So if we had the option of video out on the Pocket AI, we could see a better jump in performance. But I understand what they were going for here. This is more for AI acceleration, and you know, gaming on it was basically second thought. But I do think that there's a market for something like this, and if you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave a link to their official website and their store. And if there's anything else you'd like to see tested with the Pocket AI, just let me know in the comments below. I think that this would pair up pretty nicely with a 6800U powered handheld. Now, of course, you need extra power for this GPU, but it's totally possible to give a device like that a nice bump in GPU performance with the Pocket AI. If you've got any questions, let me know down below. Like always, thanks for watching.